This is your ear, David, speaking to you from the land of Israel. I represent Brit Ham Hebrew Awareness. Brit Ham Hebrew Awareness is a, a movement, an organization that searches the whereabouts of the lost in tribes. And they have, we have found them. We have found them amongst West European peoples or peoples of West European descent. And they're offshoots. And we have proven where they are. And we work to deepen our understanding on this subject, to research it more, to know to be able to bring more proof, some more evidence concerning it, and more details, and also to spread knowledge about it, to spread knowledge about it both to the Jewish people and to the non-Jewish people, especially to the non-Jewish people, to the people whom, to whom it concerns, to the people whom it identifies as being descendants of Israel, in many cases, in most cases, without them being aware of it, and uh, they would, uh, we assume, uh, be pleased or at least want to know about it once they understand the truth and significance of it. Originally there were 12 Israelite tribes. They divided into two sections. One section comprising Judah, the tribe of Benjamin, and uh, later most of the tribe of Levi who came to Judah, to the area of Judah, they comprise the entity known as the Kingdom of Judah. See, in 2 Chronicles 11, 14, it tells us uh, concerning the Levites, who later joined on to the tribes of Benjamin and Judah, who had comprised, originally pri uh, comprised this entity. From the descendants of this, this polity of Judah, the Kingdom of Judah, came the core element, the, the the initiators of the Jewish people. Most Jewish people somehow or other are descended from people who were in the Kingdom of Judah at that time. They included, as we said, the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, most of Levi, and also minority representatives of all of the tribes. And uh, they are referred to the Bible in Scripture as Judah. Judah refers to the, these tribes altogether. And apart from that, there were ten tribes, ten tribes in the north, that is the majority of the Israelite peoples, the majority of the Israelite tribes who created their own kingdom, their own, their own force, their own entity, polity in the Middle East, which was actually much more important and much more powerful than Judah was, or at least significantly so. And uh, this is uh, referred to as, as uh, Ephraim or as Samaria or as Israel, in, as distinct, Israel as distinct from uh, Judah and other names, and uh, these were the ten tribes. These ten tribes were conquered by the Assyrians and taken into exile. In their places of exile, they lost awareness of their ancestry. They lost consciousness of where they had come from. They too, they, they, they comprised ten tribes. The ten tribes, the ten tribes of the Northern Kingdom who were taken into exile, became the lost ten tribes. They are Man Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, Zebulun, Reuben, Simeon, Gad, Dan, Asher, and Naphtali. In addition to these ten tribes, there were also segments from the land of Judah that was conquered, and uh, people from this area were also taken into exile and were attached to the ten tribes and became part of them. So that the ten tribes, in a sense, uh, represent all of the tribes and the, and in the same measure Judah also represents all of the ten all of the twelve tribes because all of the twelve tribes are to be found amongst Judah and also amongst the ten tribes nevertheless scripture relates to the two different sections as separate and concentrates on Judah being Judah that is from the southern tribes and uh, Ephraim the, or the northern kingdom being ten tribes and the others from the other tribes, from the, those from the south who joined the north and those from the north who joined the south, are considered as minority elements who were attached and were not important uh, as a, from a, the tribal point of view. That is the point of view of scripture and Nahimundi's uh, speech of this at some length. It's, but it's worth knowing that physically there may be descendants of Judah also amongst the ten tribes of Israel. In the same way as amongst the Jews you may find descendants of uh, the ten tribes. And they had been exiled, the ten tribes had been exiled for two reasons. One reason, the prosaic reason, according to the simple 
according to the simple uh, understanding of scripture, was because they um, had been exiled because they had not gone in the ways of the Lord. They had not kept the commandments. And therefore they were punished and exiled because of it. Another reason, another reason is in order to fulfill a goal of their own, a, a, a national goal that divine providence had set aside for them. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, they were the forefathers of the Israelite nations. Jacob was also known as Israel. Jacob begat twelve sons and became the twelve tribes of Israel. These twelve tribes of Israel, they went down to Egypt. And in Egypt they increased and multiplied and they were oppressed. And then after a period they came out of Egypt led by Moses and they wandered in the wilderness and in the wilderness they received the Torah and they came into the land of Israel. And we may understand what transpired through the, taking it through the imagery. We, can, we may understand a little of what transpired through the imagery in simplified terms. The Israelites, they, when they came out of Egypt, they were supposed to receive the Torah, to keep the Torah, to go in and conquer the land. Whilst they were keeping the Torah, to conquer the land, to expand and to influence all of the world to follow God Almighty and to be a great and powerful nation and to redeem all of humanity with this combination of the Torah and military power and influence. But it so happened that they weren't up to it. They couldn't do it. They did not have the strength of character, the internal resilience, one could say, to fulfill this double double barreled task that had been set upon them they were not capable of doing it neither was the world capable of receiving them so therefore it was decreed that they should be split into two different sections one section that a student would keep the torah and develop it and the other section would go into exile and go down to the level of the gentiles and elevate themselves in the course of history, in the course of time, was bringing upwards the rest of mankind with them. And that, to a degree, is what the Ten Tribes have done. Now, before we go on with this, we should always go back to say that they had been exiled, according to the simple understanding of the Bible, because they had worshipped other idols. And this and this in itself is a very, uh, a very severe lacking on their part. This uh, was a result of very severe transgressions that they had committed. Uh, two Kings, two, the second book of Kings, chapter 17, verse 7 onwards, says this, explaining, explains why the exile of the ten tribes came about. It says, now, this came about because the sons of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, and brought them up to the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and they had feared other gods. They also followed the customs of the nations whom the Lord had driven out from before the sons of Israel. That is, when they came into the land of Israel, the Canaanite nations living in the land, these nations were very sinful. They had been warned not to follow after them, to drive these peoples out, and not to imitate their ways, not to learn from them, and, but that is what they did. They didn't drive out all of the peoples there in the land, they intermixed with them and they learned to do as they did. And in the end, this is what uh, caused them to corrupt their ways and to be exiled, as the Bible tells us. And uh, 2 Kings continues, Those are for the customs of the nations and the Lord had driven out from before the sons of Israel. And the customs of the kings of Israel, which they had introduced, it wasn't enough that they copied what other people had done. They brought in things of their own, inventions of their own. And he says, and the sons of Israel did things secretly against the Lord their God, which were not right. This word, uh, uh, so it is secretly, we have In Hebrew, actually means that they had uh, synthesized, they had uh, synthesized their own Israelite beliefs with those of the nations around them and created their own religion. Uh, so this is what it says. It says, moreover, they built from themselves high places in all their towns, from which, from which tower to fortified city. And they set up for themselves memorial stones and asherim, asherim to the sacred groves, uh, planted trees and so on, uh, on every high hill and under every green tree. 
And there they burnt incense on all the high places as the nations did that the Lord had taken into exile before them, actually had driven out before then. And they did all things provoking the Lord. They served idols concerning which the Lord has said to them, you shall not do this thing. The Lord warned Israel and Judah through all the prophets and every seer, that is, uh, people who see things, wise people, uh, saying, turn back from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes and act accordance with the law which I commanded your fathers, which I sent to you through my servants of prophets. However, they did not listen but stiffened their neck like their fathers who did not believe in the Lord their God. They rejected his statutes and his covenant which he had made with their fathers, and his warnings which he gave them. And they followed the idols and became empty, and followed the nations that surrounded them, which the Lord had commanded them not to do as they did. And they abandoned all the commandments of the Lord their God, and made for themselves cast metal images, two calves, two molten calves, uh, bull calves, uh, statue, uh, statues of metal. And they made a nashira, that is a sacred grove of a pagan uh, of a pagan goddess, and they worshipped all the heavenly lights and observed Baal. Then they made their sons and their daughters pass through the fire. And they practiced the divination and interpreting omens and gave themselves over to do evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him. So the Lord was very angry with his own, and he removed them from his sight, and none was left except the tribe of Judah. It's explained uh, by a commentator, but when it says nothing, none was left to be except, except the tribe of Judah, it means above Judah and Benjamin. The last verse we read was, So the Lord was very angry with Israel, and he removed them from his sight. No one was left except the, tr the tribe of Judah. Now it is explained by the tribe of Judah that, that both Judah and Benjamin were, were intended. Uh, that is, Judah and Benjamin together are considered Judah. The commentator said it's a Nativ, Radach, Dat Mikra. They explain that Judah and Benjamin were considered one tribe. Judah and Benjamin together were considered one tribe. Since they shared Jerusalem between them, and they had similar attitudes, a similar attitudes towards religion, a similar, one ruler, they were one tribe, one tribe but for all intents and purposes. Therefore, they are referred to in the Bible as one tribe. See, 1 Kings uh, 11 13, also 1 Kings 11 32. And uh, therefore, they were, that is what, when it says one tribe, when it says Judah, it, it includes Benjamin within Judah. On the other hand, each of the ten tribes, every single one of the ten tribes, was considered a people, an individual per, uh, people in its own right. They were different. Each tribe was different to the other, and they were already, from the very beginning, considered a different people, a separate people, an individual, a national entity, on their own. It says, ten, the ten tribes will become peoples who are each recognizable in their individual folk distinctions, even though they may be under one government and speak the same tongue. Ten peoples. Each tribe would have its own mannerisms and be a folk in its own right. That is according to the Nasiv, a great commentator in the 1800s. And that is how he, he explains the, what the ver biblical verses are to be saying. In this case, he's commentating on Genesis 28, verse 3. So that is a point worth noting. Another point worth noting is that everything that we have just read out concerning what the ten tribes used to do, the type of uh, idolatry, and how they used to worship the Baal and the Asherah, and they, how they used to pass their, their children through the fire and their property through the fire and so on. Everything, and also the Asherot and the groves, all that was to be found once again almost exactly as described amongst the Druids, the Celtic Druids of Celtic civilization in Western Europe, and also amongst the Northern peoples. They even uh, until recently they still had this ceremony of Beltane, meaning the fire of Bell. That's what it was called in Celtic, in Welsh, a belt in Scottish, Beltane, the fire bell, bell is Baal, and they used to light fires and jump over them, pass uh, cattle over them, uh, for, so that they may uh, be blessed by the fires, and so on. It's, until recently, this ceremony, these ceremonies were, all, were still kept in Scotland and Sweden and in other areas. 
the peoples whom we identify as belong to the ten tribes of Israel, these are the, the peoples of Finland, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, the Netherlands, Belgium, France, Switzerland, Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland, Ulster and Ireland era, and the offshoots overseas, including Canada, the USA, South Africa, Australia and New Zealand. We identify Ireland is from the tribe of Ashur, with some from Adan. Uh, Finland is Issachar, Sweden is Gad, Norway is Naftali, Denmark is Dan, the Netherlands is Sebulon, Belgium is Simeon and Benjamin, uh, France is Reuben, Switzerland is uh, Issachar, the same as Finland. And eventually all these peoples will acknowledge the Israelite ancestry. They shall return and be reconciled with Judah, as it says in Ezekiel 37.24. And we have uh, bi numerous biblical verses speaking about the eventual reconciliation between the ten tribes of Judah. For instance, Jeremiah 31 verse 20 onwards it says, Is it Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For though I spoke against him, I earnestly remember him still. Therefore my heart yearns for him. I will surely have mercy on him, says the Lord. It's Isaiah 11. He will set up a banner for the nations. And will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not harass Ephraim. Ezekiel 37 says, verse 19 onwards, Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel, his companions. And I will join them with it, with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they will be one in my hand. And the sticks on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations wherever they have gone, and I will gather them from every side, and bring them into their own land, and I will make them one nation in the land. On the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. That's what the prophecy says. The Jeremiah 3 says, In those days the house of Judah shall walk to the house of actually two, the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given as an inheritance unto your fathers. Jeremiah 30 says, For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, and I will break from captivity my people Israel and Judah, says the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Zechariah 10 says, verse 6, I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, the house of Joseph meaning the, the ten tribes. I will bring them back, because I will have mercy on them. They shall be so I not cast them aside, for I am the Lord their God, and I will hear them. Zechariah 10 also says, I will bring them home from the land of Egypt, and gather them from Assyria. I will bring them to the land of Gilead, and to, to Lebanon, and there is no room, until there is no room for them. Micah 7 says, Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock that brings belongs to you. Which lives alone in the forest in the midst of a garden land. Let them feed them back in Gilead as in the days of old. And so on, and numerous other verses say the same thing. Eventually, Los Tentrovis and Israel and Judah will reunite. They shall come back together. And what was the whole point? The whole point was that they should go down into the level of the Gentiles. The Tentrovis should go down to the level of the Gentiles and elevate themselves and uh, bring the rest of the world up with them. We have a commentary, Rabbi Moshe David Valley, in the late 1600s, 1700s, he says, It is no matter that Israel did not descend into the realms of pollution, other than for the need to clarify his destiny. He needed to fulfill the will of God and reform the world. Ephraim, we shall see, is speaking about Ephraim. He needed to reform the world, to fulfill the, needed to fulfill the will of God and reform the world through redirecting its forces. When this is done, they shall return to their source. There will no need to remain in that situation anymore. This is the meaning of Ephraim, shall say. What have I to do anymore with idols? For Isaiah 14.8. In other words, Ephraim had to become like the Gentiles. He was already like the Gentiles before he was exiled. Before he was exiled, they were already worshipping idols, acting like Gentiles. They had become, in all effects and purposes, virtually Gentiles, virtually pagans. So God let them go their way, but he had it, did it in such a fashion that they should utilize the innate Hebraic destiny, strivings, ambitions, their instincts to elevate themselves on, uh, in the course of history and bring the world forward, and bring themselves forward with it, and uh, 
bring mankind to a higher level, which is what has happened. And this is one of the reasons the Lost Ten Tribes had to go into exile and lose the consciousness of their ancestry. May the Lord God of Israel bless you. Thank you.